.NET 8 was just released and one of the exciting new introductions is .NET Aspire. It's a technology stack for building cloud-native distributed applications in .NET and it solves many of the problems of building distributed systems out of the box. In this video, we're going to take a first look at .NET Aspire and see what it can do. To get started with .NET Aspire, you're going to need the preview version of Visual Studio that has the templates for creating Aspire applications. I'm going to search for Aspire and you'll see two templates pop up. The first one is the empty template for a .NET Aspire application and the second one is a starter application with a Blazor frontend and the web API backend already configured. And optionally, you can also introduce a Redis cache. And this is the application that we're going to take a look at in this video to see what .NET Aspire is about. This is the solution structure that you get when you scaffold a new .NET Aspire application and it contains four projects inside. I'm going to start from the simple ones. So let's take a look at the web API. This is a .NET 8 web API with some service defaults. We're going to talk about this a bit later. It exposes the problem details. It builds the web application, which it then uses to expose one endpoint, which is the scaffolded weather forecast endpoint. You've probably already seen this example. Then we have some default endpoints. This is another extension method from Aspire that I'm going to talk about a bit later. Then I've got my Blazor frontend application, which also adds the default services. Then we have this line here that introduces a Redis output cache, which is really interesting. Then we've got some stuff for components. Then another interesting point is configuring an HTTP client for talking with our web API. And notice the URL that we are using to point to our web API backend. We aren't specifying localhost or any port, we are just referencing API service. I'm also going to explain more about this in just a moment. And then the rest of the things here are standard Blazor stuff, and also exposing the default endpoints. You're probably familiar with these two projects that I just showed you. And now let's take a look at the two projects from Aspire. So the first one is the app host project, which is actually our startup project that will be responsible for running the web API and the Blazor frontend. So if you take a look at the program CS of the Aspire app host, you'll see that it uses a distributed application to create a new distributed application builder, which it then uses to introduce a Redis container. Apart from the Redis container that's going to run inside of Docker, we're also adding some projects. In this case, we have the web API backend and notice that it has a name here called API service. And we're also adding the front-end project, which is our Blazor application, and it has some references. So what is going on here? .NET Aspire gives you a way to configure your distributed applications. Your system could consist of many different services. In our example, we have three components, the Web API backend, the Blazor frontend, and a Redis for distributed caching. So what Aspire allows us to do is to configure all of these services inside of an Aspire application, and then Aspire will take care of running these applications together when we start our system. So notice that the Aspire app host is the startup project, and when I run this, it's going to scaffold up all the Docker containers. In this case, that's going to be a Redis service and our two .NET applications and run them together while also taking care of configuration, resiliency, telemetry, logging, and so much more. And we're going to explain all of these topics as we go through the video. The second project that Aspire scaffolds is the Aspire service defaults that contains an extensions class that we use to define our extension methods. So if you recall in our web API backend, we had a call to add service defaults. This is the extension method defined inside of the service defaults project, and it configures some default services in your Aspire applications, such as open telemetry, which is used to capture metrics, traces, and logs in your cloud native applications. Then we have this call here, which is really interesting, and it's responsible for configuring service discovery inside of an Aspire application. So if I go back to the Blazor application, you'll notice that I'm adding a Redis output cache here. And for the connection name to our Redis instance, I'm specifying cache. Now, another interesting thing is when we configure the Weather API client, I'm referencing our .NET Web API as the API service. So you might be wondering where do these names come from? Well, inside of our Aspire app host, I'm adding my Redis container and giving it a name. And in this case, I'm calling it cache 
which is the same value that I will use inside of the Blazor frontend. And for the backend application, I'm giving it the name of API service, and this is what Aspire will use to configure service discovery. So when I use API service inside of my Blazor frontend for the HTTP client configuration, the Aspire application will know how to map this into the URL and port for my backend API. And in order to connect all of these services together, I'm grabbing a reference to the cache and the API service when I configured them with Aspire, and I'm using them when I configure the Blazor frontend to add them as a reference. So now my Blazor frontend is configured to use the Redis cache and my backend API service. I can also change the name from API service to something else like weather client. And in that case, I will also have to make an update in my Blazor frontend to also reference that same name. So I'm going to revert to my old values for API service, which are the default values. And let's see what else is configured in our service defaults. The next call is configuring some HTTP client defaults. And this will apply the configuration to all of the HTTP client instances in your application, mainly adding some resiliency policies to your HTTP clients to make them more reliable. The next call hooks into the service discovery system that I just explained. And let's take a look at the next part which is configuring OpenTelemetry. So this will take care of wiring up OpenTelemetry services, which are used for exporting metrics, traces, and logs in your cloud native applications. And you can actually update this file to further configure your OpenTelemetry setup. For example, what you want to do with metrics or tracing, out of the box, you have ASP.NET Core traces, gRPC, and HTTP client traces. The next part configures the OpenTelemetry exporters so that these metrics can be exported to some external services where you can monitor them. You will also see that we have some commented outlines here for configuring OpenTelemetry with a Prometheus exporter or using an Azure monitor if those are the services that you want to use. Out of the box, these metrics are going to work in memory. So the next part is for configuring some default health checks and also mapping the health check endpoints so both our Blazor client and our web API server are going to have a health check exposed on the health route and on the alive route with a specific tag. And then the last method here is for adding some more built-in metrics. Now I want to go back to the Blazor application and talk a bit more about the service discovery that's going on here. Notice that we are not exposing or passing in any connection strings to external services, in this case, the Redis cache. And if you take a look at app settings here, you'll see that we have just the default values for configuring the log levels, but there's nothing about a connection string to Redis. It's really amazing how this is taken care of by the Aspire components. And if you take a look at the dependencies of the Blazor application, you'll notice that it's using an Aspire Stack Exchange Redis package for output caching. And this is a library for a component that can be configured to run inside of the Aspire application. So this is the reason why I can just say cache here and everything will work when I run the application. The same goes for the service discovery for my HTTP client. I've given you the high level rundown of what an Aspire application looks like. And now let's actually start the application and I'm going to show you something even more amazing. When you start an Aspire application, you are greeted with this awesome dashboard that contains a lot of information about your system. So here we have the list of projects that we are running inside of Aspire and you can see our backend API service and the web frontend running in Blazor. I also have the URLs for these components and this is just a single endpoint for my backend returning me the weather forecast information. And if I click on the frontend, I can navigate through the application, use the components, and if I go to the weather component, I will get the weather forecast here, which is going to be retrieved from my backend application. I'm going to fetch the weather forecast a few more times to show you something interesting when I go back to the dashboard. And then the next thing that you can look at is the environment variables for your projects. And here's what we have for our API service. And you can see the main environment variables for open telemetry. And you can also do the same for our Blazor application. Then you can take a look at any containers that you might have running. In this case, we have our Redis container and you can see the name of the image and also the port where this Redis instance is exposed. And you can also take a look at any environment variables or even dive into the logs for your container. So this will give me the live logs for the Redis instance. I can also go into the project logs and take a look at the logs outputted by my API service 
and my Blazor client. And for example, you can see the HTTP request that I'm sending here to my backend application. You also have access to any structured logs. You get a really nice overview of any structured logs inside of your system. So you can see the default startup logs from our backend API and a bunch of logs from the Blazor client. Now notice that the logs also have a trace associated with them and you can also take a look at any details about the log that's going to contain the important information. This particular log is where we send our API request to the backend service. Let's take a look at the most amazing part about this dashboard, which are the traces. So here you can see the application traces that my services are sending. So if I take a look at this trace, that contains both the API service and my web frontend, I can see the request flow for loading the weather component. So you can see our Blazor application loading the weather component and then sending a get request to the backend. But notice this request here, where we are first trying to fetch the data from a Redis cache and running into a cache miss. Then we're going to send the actual HTTP request to our backend and you can see our API service responding with the weather forecast information. And finally, we are completing the request and setting the data inside of our Redis cache. Now, if I take a look at another request to the weather component, for example, this one here, you'll see that it's a slightly different trace because there's no mention of our backend API, which would be the API service component. And this is because we are using an output cache. And you can see this because we are trying to send the HTTP request to the backend, but we are first checking if the data is available in Redis. And you can see that this returns the cached value. So there's no need to send the HTTP request to our backend API. Now you can see many more interesting things inside of these traces. And one more thing I want to show you is the metrics that you can take a look at when you choose one of your services. For example, in the Blazor frontend, I can take a look at the number of requests or the request duration. I'm going to update the time here so that I can capture the moment when I was sending requests to this application. You can see some metrics for our cache roll server and then metrics from OpenTelemetry. And you can see the same for our backend API. So if I take a look at the request duration, you can see some metrics about that. And you can also see more information about the individual requests, such as the HTTP methods, the status codes that were returned from our API, and which API routes were hit for these particular requests. I'm really excited about .NET Aspire and what it could become as we are moving closer to the first release, because right now it's still in preview. In some future videos, I'm going to show you the more advanced setups of using .NET Aspire, so make sure to smash the subscribe button so you don't miss those videos, and until next time, stay awesome.